Welcome, friends. It is I, Earl Sky, and it's time for the newest vlog, and it is Friday night this time because Saturday morning, when I usually do the vlogs, is the sign up for the Comic Con convention. So I'm going to focus on that, and I don't want to mess that up. And I don't know if I'm going to be around later on the day after that. Going to go bet on the dogs. Going to bet on um, some horses and more horses. There you go. Um, because I live near, no, I don't live near, but I'm, I'm in San Diego, so I'm near the Del Mar racetrack where you can bet on horses. So there's that. So I'm probably going to be doing that Saturday, so I'm not going to be having any time to do the vlog, unfortunately. So there you go with that. I don't know what's going to be the footage in the background, because I haven't decided what that footage is going to be yet. It might be the, um, if I can get it. Actually, I shouldn't say what it is in case that's not that. But if it is what I hope it is, it's going to be amazing. If it isn't, um, yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Nox got buffed. Okay, if you watch today's stream, um, which only 10 people watched, I am not that popular on stream, I gotta work on that. Uh, we used to have like 30 people regularly. I think part of it is school and the other part is I'm just not able to stream Smite as much as I used to. I stream it twice a week now, maybe three times. Used to stream it a bit more, but just haven't been able to do that because of school and everything. And also when I can stream, it's while everyone's in school. So really falling off on popularity with Smite streams. Which is too bad, but I don't know what I can do about that. I really can't. I am my hands are tied in that respect. It's too bad. Oh well. Um But so Nox got buffed. And in my opinion, she got buffed the wrong way. She was just given power. So now she can hit really hard instead of being given utility. So she's a really good bursty mage. She can't burst you one hundred to zero, but she can hurt you pretty hard and harass you pretty well. And she'll take you out. In a couple, it has to be a prolonged fight to take you out. But she can still take you out, she just can't burst you down like regular mages can. So she's a good laning mage. She's a very good laning mage. She can, she can gank a little bit if you're low, if you're full. She should not waste her time on you. Simple as that. Um, but she doesn't have much utility. All she has is the silence. That's it. They just, they made the damage on her 203 way better. It's, it's a lot, it's basically doubled up a little bit. It's doubled and... For the most part, so she hits harder, they put down some of the, the power contribution because of it, but she still hits pretty damn hard. And that wasn't really her problem. Like, she was a good poker, now they made her a scary poker, but she still cannot kill you easily. It's gonna take a while to kill you, but her utility still isn't there. And it's really unfortunate. All she's got is a 1 to 1.5 second uh, silence, that's it. Her shield just does a mitigation stun, her passive is still crap, and her ultimate is still crap. I've killed people with their ultimate, but it's just they killed me and then they died because they also casted something. That's That's been the extent of that ultimate. It's unfortunate. Her passive is still reliant on her enemy doing abilities. And I'll give you the math on this. If she fights Anubis, once every four waves, she's going to get that. She's gonna be able to do a free ability because Anubis only needs his three to clear. Same thing with Poseidon. If she fights someone who needs two to do a clear, like maybe Hercules, then she can do it every two waves. That's one free ability. But her mana isn't her problem, so that passive is crap to me. Her one, eh, the mitigation ain't bad, but it only does one ability, so it's good against alts. It's only useful against alts, as long as it's not a Nubis alt. But it's only good against an alt. That is all it's good for. DOT is not good for against anyone with just basic attack potential, not good against, just doesn't work out, so she's screwed there. Her two hits hard, does a sound, her three hits hard, can be done every three seconds. Has a bigger size than Hebo's, it's not as instant. It's dodgeable, so you have to lead it a little bit, and her all the crap that it is. It needs a cripple or something. And my opinion on Nox is this. She's still useless. Nox can hit hard. She can take out a low-level target. She can push very well. But in a team fight, she's worthless. That is my opinion. Because all she has is a silence. She doesn't have a slow. She doesn't have a stun. She doesn't have any reason not to hit her. But Stet absolutely destroys Nox. Yum uh, Loki absolutely destroys Nox. Certain mages can make assassins wary, scared of them. Not Nox. Anything physical destroys Nox, basically. Warriors destroy her. Assassins destroy her. Hunters obviously destroy her. Mages cannot, uh, can have a bit of trouble with her, but they can still destroy her because she only does like 200 damage at final level per you casting something. And you can do a lot more than 200 damage when you hit her with your abilities, especially if you're doing an ult. If you're just doing your combat, that's four abilities. She's doing about 200 plus some power there, so maybe she's doing... She's doing about 800 or so damage to you with just her ultimate. It will say 800, maybe 900 or 1,000 damage. You have more HP than that, even if she's hitting you with a 203. You might be able to survive that and kill her as a mage, and especially as a guardian, you will survive that and kill her. She's still pretty squishy. 
So she's not that scary. There's uh, better mages for utility and better mages for damage. And she doesn't bring anything to a team fight. She goes in there and tethers one person, but they can easily get away from her. She can go in there and silence people, but that's 1 to 1.5 seconds. That's not very long, and against basic attacks, that is worthless. She's an anti-caster, and that's what she should be, but she just doesn't bring enough to the table, even against casters. My opinion is her ultimate needs to either lock someone down, or it, it just needs to be something to lock someone down. It really does. Her ultimate needs to bring something to the table, because it's a single target ultimate. Not a lot of ultimates in this game for mages are single target. The only one is like Aphrodite's, which is an invincibility thing. Kronos is, if you count it, it's just him healing himself, and that's it. Everyone else has more than one target in their ultimate when it comes to a mage. I just can't think of anyone else who does not have a single target. I mean, who does have a single target besides those mages there. So she has this focused one target ultimate that doesn't do shit! Doesn't do a damn thing! What is up with that? I, she needs something else. Uh, and the shield's the only thing you can look at because her three, no one wants to change her three. But you gotta look at her shield. And my opinion is maybe make it do mana damage. She can eat an ultimate with that. So if Scylla hits her with Scylla's ultimate and you shield that, you take away Scylla's ultimate, Scylla's mana as that much, as whatever damage is mitigated to it as mana damage to Scylla. So Scylla loses all her mana and now she's kind of dead in the water. That would be amazing. Punishing people for doing big damage attacks on her when she does her shield would be an amazing counterplay. That's something I argue for. And passive, I feel like either gives her mana instead of a free ability, or gives her abilities more damage, or debuffs enemies when enemies cast abilities around her, they're debuffed in some way like they just do less damage, or maybe they they take more damage from her, just something else. Because the passive is worthless. It really is. 50 to 100 mana is nothing to such a mana efficient god like Nox. She can handle it. Her abilities are cheap. She is not having a problem with mana. That is for dang shit. So I played her for a couple games in Conquest. In mid, I destroyed Agni because he was getting too cocky. He was playing... Agni players for some reason are very cocky. They will get in your face for reasons I don't understand and get themselves killed very often. I've done it so many times against Agni's, I don't get it. But Agni got really cocky and I destroyed him. And then I destroyed him again and again. I went 4-0 uh, mid Nox in my first game, but then my teammates just fed everywhere and then we lost and I go 4-6 at the end of the game. It was very unfortunate. Nox can hurt, but she just can't carry. My next game, uh, I ended up trying out Nox jungle just to try it out. And she can clear, but she can't gank, so that was actually not a great idea. Just could not gank. She can't take anyone from 100-0, no matter how hard you try. So it was just a terrible idea. But you have to try it at least once, and I tried it at least once, and that was foolish. There again, I go solo with her. I do really well. I'm wrecking kind of well, but our, in the end, our team just played really bad. And if you saw the stream, holding up, we had an Artemis who barely finished her Devourer's Gloves at the 20-minute mark. She bought Tier 1 everything, then Tier 2 everything. Ah, uh, no. No. And they didn't talk at all during the match, so I have no idea... Uh, where this person came from, the Artemis was also like five levels below everyone else. I don't know what happened there, but I, this is Matchmaker. Matchmaker gave me these teammates. I had some really, really bad teammates, and I know I'm a pretty good player, so I'm like, where the hell is Hi-Rez putting me in the Matchmaker? Because I know they're still working on it, but holy crap, I'm getting some really weird teammates here. And what this does is just going to bring down whatever hidden elo I have down even further, so I'm going to get even more weird teammates. So, Friday stream was a very not fun day, playing Nox. Although I was doing really well with her, I didn't have a team around me that could do anything with it, so it was very unfortunate. I was getting a lot of kills, but I couldn't do anything with it. Nox can get kills. If her opponent is, is foolish enough to think they can hang with her in the lane, they get killed. She's really good at pushing. She's really good at poking. But when she gets into a team fight, she gets destroyed. When she gets ganked, she gets destroyed. It is very unfortunate, and that's not good. It's not really good to rely on actives to survive. It really isn't. And in my opinion, she's the one that really needs it. Well, in every direction, she needs it. She needs it. She needs beads for some things, ages for some things. She needs combat blink for other things. She needs sprint for a, a lot of things. There's guys who don't have escapes that just need combat blink. They'll get out of a lot of things. Aegis and Beads are general for anything. Combat Blink usually is used to make up for some things, but they have other things. Okay, let's go with the mages who don't have escapes. Anubis. 
He has a slow with his three. He has the ability to strip your armor as well as his abilities, but also he has a mummification that lasts pretty damn long. Anubis can get away without having an escape pretty well. Isis lacks an escape, but she has extra speed when she does her one, her two stuns, her three silences you, and her ultimate can heal her as she's running away. It'll punish you for fighting her. She has means of getting away. Janus has an escape, so I can't really use him. Let's see here, Rose is there. Freya has an escape. Priscilla has an escape. Uh, what mages don't have escapes? Aphra doesn't escape, but she has her ultimate. Cronus doesn't have escape, but he has his ultimate. Nox's ultimate just don't do anything. It's I can't think of any mage who at least cannot feasibly get out of their predicament besides Nox. Nox, I view it as impossible to get out of your predicament without sprint or combat blink. And you'd have to have sprint with bees or sprint with Aegis as well. You can't just have sprint on its own unless you fight an enemy who just has slows like Bastet. With sprint, you can get away from Bastet, but if, but if she just sticks to you, you might just die anyway, so I don't know. But you need combat blink with Nox to survive. That's really it. That is it. It's really not good for her to not have it, looks like, for me. But everyone has a means of trying to slow down the enemy or just getting away. That one to five second sl silence does not work on some of the roster of this game. A lot of the roster. A lot of the roster, man. So, not, not feeling the knocks. Not feeling the knocks. Gonna master knocks and then be done with it. We're gonna master. I need one more point to master Sir Ket and then I'll probably play her a little bit more. But I wasn't a big fan of Sir Ket. The newest gods I haven't been so great on. Not really liking all that much Nox. I I like the idea, but he did it wrong in my opinion, so I'm not liking her. Kabrakin I really hated. He's gotten a lot better now, but I don't think I'm going to play him all that much anyway because there's other Guardians I like more. Sylvanas I definitely liked more, but he can't 100 to 0 people like other Guardians can. He's way too reliant on teammates. He can be an amazing nuisance, but he just can't kill anyone unless they were ballsy enough to stick with him for like 5 minutes. Like, I've killed people when they stick with me forever, but I'm not doing any damage. I'm slowly willing them down. And they finally die because they really wanted to kill my ass, but they couldn't because I'm Sylvanas. That's that's just my opinion right now. It's not having a high opinion of Nox, which is too bad because I like the idea, but they just did it wrong. Poor execution. Ideas are dime a dozen, but it's execution that matters, and the execution didn't, was not there for Nox. And we'll see what they do with her if they do anything. Now she can get kills, but that's not the only stat that matters. Uh, something interesting is Smite stuff came out, and they have a lot of statistics. And I looked at my statistics and it shows that I get a lot of kills, I don't assist a lot, I don't do the best on gold, and uh, my win rate's pretty good. But it's very reflective of the fact that the majority of my characters that I, of my gods that I'm good with are assassins. Assassins get a lot of kills, they get killed quite a bit, they don't get a lot of assists. So it's very reflective of what I am in that way, that's pretty, pretty interesting to see there. The most interesting thing they had is uh, popularity of gods and modes. Some are duh, like popularity of gods in general, mages were at the top, like way above everyone else. Then it's then everyone else is middling uh, along the like around the mid area and warriors and guardians. When warriors got super nerfed, they went down and guardians went up. And now warriors are a little bit better, so now they're starting to even up a little bit. While you see assassins and hunters are pretty steady, which is not a surprise. Mage is always up there because you usually see one to two mages per game in any mode besides well, assault being random. But in conquest, you usually have a mage in mid, guaranteed a mage in mid, uh, a mage in mid. And sometimes a mage in solo, so there you go. There's always a hunter at ADC or a mage at ADC. So big surprise that mages are just lovers. And sometimes you see a mage in support or a guardian support or a warrior in support. And then finally jungle, there's a lot of mages that can jungle and assassin that can jungle. So it's no surprise that mages are at the top. Now here's the one that I, I was surprised at and in a way maybe I shouldn't have been. That is Conquest has fallen in popularity. Conquest was number one for the longest time, we all know that. But it is, in the last few months, gone below Assault and Arena, and now Assault is the number one in popularity. Conquest is number three, barely above Joust and a bit below Arena, and then finally is Siege at the bottom. So holy crap. Conquest is third most popular game mode with Assault as the highest. And this is my argument on why that is, and that is, Conquest is the highest toxicity point in Smite. This is where you're likely to get the most toxic responses from people. This is where you're most likely to get people yelling at you and being complete jerks to you. That is Conquest. I can guarantee that we all know that for a fact. So that's my argument for that part. The other part is Conquest is the one with all the pressure. The pressure to do well is in Conquest. Some people don't like pressure, so they're not going to play Conquest. And I understand. They'd rather play Arena, which has a little bit less pressure and also is more, less about thinking and more about just fighting, or Assault, where it's random what you get and it's usually chill on Assault because, well, it's random what you get. So that's my argument. My argument is 
Conquest is too toxic, which is why it's down there. But also because Conquest, there's a lot more weight put there as far as skills go to people. And because of that, no one wants to screw up, and that's why they're not in there. And that's why Conquest is the third most popular now, while Assault is number one with Arena at second. Because Arena can get some toxicity, especially if people are just being stupid. But for the most part, Arena is pretty chill, and with Assault being the most chill, with some people just going, what the hell, once in a while. Like, I know I do, when I see an obvious mistake going on, that, well, I don't know why you did that at all. It's uh, sometimes just see people who just think they know what the hell they're talking about, and then they don't, and then they die horribly, and you go, well, you're an idiot. Simple. There you go. But that's a lot of smite talk. Uh, the one shot is Evolve. Check that out. That is a, I, did, I put so much work into that. Evolve is a really fun game. It's amazing. It's an asymmetrical 4v1 game. And I have a lot of thoughts on what makes it great and some of the mistakes that can make it not so great and stuff like that. Evolve is really good. I enjoyed the ever-loving crap out of Evolve. I, I really, really liked it. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, so the one shot should be a lot of fun to, to watch. I talked for 35 minutes straight. I did not stop talking for that entire thing. There's a lot of enthusiasm in that and a lot of thinking about different factors in that video. So it's worth a watch if you have any interest in Evolve at all. Uh, so there's gonna also Shadow Mordor when it's done. Uh, we're gonna put Evolve there as a buffer before the next LP. Shadow Mordor of course has been incredibly fun. So amazingly fun. It's just so great. I have been at the peak of my skills as far as LPing goes with Shadow Mordor. So we'll see how I do in the next one after that. We'll have Evolve as a buffer between because I really enjoyed Evolve. So we're going to see footage from the alpha there. I'm just really good. So we're uh, we're going pretty... We're already in this thing. We're been a lot of minutes of me talking. And it's been mostly smite. Because I'm just getting that off my chest, really. Those thoughts on that. And also makes me wonder, what should I focus on? Like, people like Conquest, so obviously I should still do Conquest. And also, like, right now it is two Conquests if I can, two Arenas if I can, and then an Assault or a Siege or something else. Or maybe an extra Conquest or no, an extra Arena. But Conquest is less popular, but does that mean do it less? I don't think so. I think I should just still do it as much as I have been. I don't know, maybe the popularity, not popular, but the opinions of where people want to see things has shifted. Or maybe it hasn't. Maybe people still want to watch Conquest. But they'd rather play the other modes, I don't know. It's just curious to see where the popularity has gone. And what would best serve me. But actually, I think what best serves, not me, but the community, is to keep the spread that it is. Should not make one more of one than the other. Should just constantly try to have two of each and then something else as the, as the fifth video. I think that's just the best way to go about it, so why am I even talking about it? Um, the special smite thing I talked about last week is probably finally going to come up eventually. Jinx has been too busy with studies and midterms and homework to uh, work on it yet. So it's too bad there, but stuff happens. I took, a, I've had two midterms, I'm gonna have another midterm in like a week or two, so I have to do that as well. So we're getting busy here and there as we go. And we're having other ideas we wanna work on and stuff like that, but eventually the new educational series is gonna come out and that should be a lot of fun to do. And I can't wait to do that. As far as guides go, I've realized I should just figure out who the next five guides are. So Rajon Kwe, Kumba Karna, Mercury, Uller, we haven't figured out who the warrior is going to be. After the warrior guide goes out, that's a five, that's a series of five as we've been doing. After that, I will do a role-specific guide. Or will we make it ADC, uh, jungle, support, mid, solo. Which one do we make? We'll be up to vote, and we'll go from there. Usually we only get about ten people voting, which is not the biggest vote, but that's because we just do it for on streams. We don't really put it up on a video saying, hey, vote and see what we go with. Probably do that for the role, though. See what most popular role to do. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? I think that's everything. All right, it is Saturday morning now. We just got the Comic-Con tickets. I literally got the last two tickets of the pre-registration. That's it. I got the last two. Not even the best ones. I got Sunday. But we got the last two badges. I cannot believe it. It's like, there's only two left. Just two left. Well, I'm going to take those two. And I got them. That was nuts. So, cut off from uh, yesterday's recording to this one because... Uh, been thinking about the subject I'm supposed to talk about. Somebody asked me to do fear. Fear in relation to the fact that they're scared of playing their legendary gods in Conquest because people give them crap they don't do well. And so because of that, they just don't play them. So that's that's the subject there to talk about. And I uh, thought about it a lot and talked about it a lot. The realization is I need to condense it a bit because holy crap did I go to a lot of places. So here's me trying to summarize it and beat around the bush because also I tried to not dehumanize it. I think dehumanizing it is kind of the only way to go about it as well. We'll get to that in a moment. So there's a lot of different kinds of fear. There's like irrational fears, rational fears, fears you learn. There's different kinds of fear going on. But in relation to 
uh, fear of not wanting to use your legendaries. I think there's two kinds of fear going on there, and it depends on who you are what the fear is. It's either the fear of not wanting to let people down because they have expectations, and the fear of humiliation. And it's probably humiliation, but I'm going to go over both, because it relates to me, and I should talk about me a little bit in here, right? So fear of letting people down. I have that anxiety a lot. I have that fear a lot. I'm really scared of letting you guys down by not playing well or not making good content and this or that. And because of that fear, it just makes matters worse and it just makes me not play well and it just makes me react poorly to things. And it's not helping at all. Um, yesterday's game, I had that 4-0 game and then it became a 4-6 game because my teammates really let me down and I just, I kind of flipped out a bit on that game because it was frustrating to have this amazing game be absolutely destroyed by just terrible teammates. Nox cannot do enough for her teammates to turn that around, so it was very frustrating to be Nox as well. If I was a fed Poseidon, I could do some things. If I was a fed Scylla, I could do some things. But a fed Nox couldn't do it, so it was just a really frustrating game, and it showed how frustrated I was, and that was not making it very fun, and I just couldn't hide it. I was really frustrated with that, because like, we're going to have a really good game here. It would be very entertaining, and then it just didn't happen. And so fear can just make things not go well. Fear does a couple things. Fear either makes you do things poorly or fear makes you not do anything at all. As is the case of this person not wanting to do the legendary gods. But fear for me of fear of letting you guys down, it can just causes a lot of anxiousness and anxiety. And just mistakes get made or this and that. I, I long time ago I had the fear of just not reaching people because I wasn't in master in ranked. I put in a lot of time to that, and I know damn well if I really put in the time, I could get Master or at least Diamond. I know I could. But that is a big time sink. Would it be worth the time? I have no idea. Like, because people go, oh, he's a Diamond player, he's a Master player, okay, we should look at him. Maybe that would get some people's attention. It probably would. Would it get more attention than just working with uh, beginners from the beginning, like I am now? Would that, would that be the better way to do it? Maybe, I don't know. But I've chosen the way I'm going. If I really wanted to go the master route, which is something that's totally doable, but it would take all my time to do, which would cut away from a lot of things. I don't, I just don't think it's worth it. But maybe, I don't, it could be, it might not be, I don't know. But at this point, I should just move forward with what we're doing, that is just keep making more series and guides for people and to get them better at the game. I won't get everyone's attention, I have to rely on you guys to share me a little bit, but that's just the way I'm going to have to go with it. Because we'd have to sacrifice a lot just for me to try to do master a diamond because i don't have all the time in the world anymore to do stuff like that so of course i have that eating me a little bit and just stuff like that the fear of letting you guys down by just not doing well or just not sharing it with enough people and stuff like that and that sucks now that's one potential fear for why you don't want to play your best gods because people expect you to do really well and then you do poorly and then well you feel like crap that is one potential fear. The other one, which is what I think probably is, is the fear being of humiliation and being made fun of for not doing well. And this is where it gets dehumanizing, whether I like it or not. There's a lot of assholes. A lot of them. I don't like using labels, but I, I think just to speed this up, I have to, which is just the human nature of to speed things up and use labels. I could go philosophically on just people or people, and there's just all different kinds of this, this, and that, all these other things. But... Just to make this easy and not have to think too much, there's a lot of bad people out there. There's a lot of people for whatever reason. Some people are just dicks. Some people are just not in a good mood right now and they will make fun of you because they need to feel better about themselves for whatever reason. Some people will just make fun of you because that's just what they do. They don't care. They just don't care. That's just the person they are. But the thing you got to realize, which is depressing, is assholes exist. And they will always exist. And they're only using, looking for whatever excuse to give you shit. You playing poorly would be one reason. Whatever icon you're using could be another if you're using whatever flag, whatever you're, whatever you're saying. People will use whatever they can to give you crap. And if you're playing a legendary guy and you're not doing well, they'll give you crap for that. But you know what? Even if you're playing a, a ranked 1 god, a ranked 2, they're still going to give you crap. People just give other people crap regardless. And it's very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Don't be afraid of playing your legendary gods. Because, well... It's shit's gonna rain no matter what because that's how people are and that's not the, that's not the best outlook on it But that's the outlook you gotta you gotta take I think is just play what you want and have fun Because there's a lot of party poopers out there every party needs a pooper and there's plenty of them and So just play what you want to play and have fun and if they're giving you crap mute them Simple as that just mute them if they are giving you more crap than you if you report them for harassment You just don't bother with them Here's the other thing that's dehumanizing is 
There's a ton of people playing this game. You're rarely going to see the same person twice. Unless you queue immediately, then you might see them again. In rank, you might see some people a little bit more often, depending on what time of the day you're playing. But in just casual, it's rare for you to see the same person more than once. It really is. It's cool when you run into the same person you like. It sucks when you see the same person you don't like. But it doesn't happen all that often. So you don't have to worry about that as well in the, in the stranger way. I don't really like writing things off as, oh, it's just some stranger, but I think you have to. You kind of have to if you want to keep your sanity. That's the thing that gets realized is, you deal with a lot of people, and you might only deal with them for 20 minutes. That's not so bad. And, well, they're, they're not going to remember you beyond whatever crap they give you for that game. They're not gonna. Because they're going to move on and give someone else crap the next game. They're only going to remember you if you're someone bigger. Like, if you're, like me, I know damn well... If someone knows I'm a YouTuber, and then I have a bad game with them, they're going to remember that. At least for a while. And they're going to probably say that. And that's the thing that makes me scared is, I don't want word of mouth going around saying that Scarf sucks. But it's going to happen anyway, for whatever reason. The realization is people will hate you anyway. Here's the thing. Here's the real, here's the real truth about things. There's like, what, 7 or so billion people in this world. Less than 1% of those people in this world are going to hate you. Less than 1% of the people in this world are going to like you. And the other 98 per plus percent don't give a shit who you are because they don't know who the hell you are. Translate that to the Smite community. Whatever percentage of the Smite community is going to see you. And they're going to have a good impression or a bad impression of you regardless of how you play or whatever you say. They're going to just feel something about you one way or the other. While a large majority of the, of the Smite community will never know who the hell you are. I've been in Smite for two years, and there's plenty of people who still don't know who the hell I am, and I've been around. There's plenty of people who like me, and there's plenty of people who hate me. There are people who absolutely hate my builds. My builds are unorthodox, but they're set up for a reason in a different way. I don't just follow the meta, I do what I think works for me, and it works out. And the builds I suggest for beginners are ones I feel that'll make, make them comfortable. They're not pro builds, they're builds meant for beginners to get better at the game. So that's the truth of it. The truth of it is, regardless of who you are, even freaking Jesus, people are going to love you, people are going to hate you, and people are not going to know who the hell you are. All three of those things are going to happen. So because of that, do whatever you want. Play the gods you enjoy and have fun with it. People are going to give you crap for how you play, people are going to love you for how you play, people are going to be indifferent. And after that game's over, they're going to forget who the hell you were, for the most part, unless you put in a really good impression, or a really bad impression. But that's a rare thing, and not one you need to worry about at the end of the day. I worry about it, though I probably shouldn't. I worry about it because I just want to be... Not, not really popular, but I want to be known so more people see the guides and everything. I put that pressure on me. I want more people to learn and get better at the game, and I want less a-holes. I want to give a-holes less ammunition. That's why we do the beginner guide and stuff. That's why we help people get better at the game, because the better people get at the game, the less ammunition a-holes have. They can't use your gameplay against you. They have to use your race, your ethnicity, all whatever thing. Which is just dick, but they're going to do it anyway. But at least they're not using your gameplay against you. That's the only thing I can minimize. I can't change who you are. I can't change who they are. But I can change how well you play. I have no idea if I answered the question of fear there. Basically what I'm saying is just play. Play your game. Have fun. At the end of the day, we play games to have fun. It's not the only emotion that we get out of games, but it's the main one. Kind of that's what games mean, but... You can play games for other emotions as well. Not just happiness, not just fun, not just triumph, but you also... Certain games you can play to feel sad or sorrow or whatever emotions, depending if you're playing a more story type game, stuff like that. There's different games for different feelings out there. It's the really good vastness of games as it's growing, which is great. But the main one we do is to have fun or just to enjoy ourselves in some way, whatever way we want to enjoy ourselves. So enjoy your legendary gods. Enjoy whatever you want to do. Just have fun. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. There's some fears that are warranted to have. Fear of embarrassment is not one of them. There's no reason to be scared of being embarrassed. I really don't think so because things just happen. Life just happens. You're going to have embarrassing moments in your life and all you can do is own them and do better next time. That's all you can really do. You can't deny they happen. They happen. Just, just, just play. Just do whatever you want. Just do it. Um, mean, I mean that in a game sense. Don't cast crimes. But um, just just have fun, people. Just have fun. That's really what you should just do at the end of the day. Have fun, everyone. But that is the vlog right there. Um, yeah, that's the vlog. I had fun. Hope you have fun watching.
And, uh, oh, as always, of course, thank you to the viewers for listening and watching and liking and commenting and all those things. Please comment whenever you can, like whenever you can, share whenever you can. It all freaking helps. The bigger we get, the more people we reach, the more people we help, and the more comfortable setting we can create. That is the dream that isn't fully possible, but at least we can create better, is a community for people to be comfortable playing uh, games, to not feel uh, the chance of ridicule and stuff like that. We can make the clan bigger or just make a bigger community of people to play with each other where they're not going to give each other crap. That'd be a great thing. We're not big enough to make it completely impossible, but it, we can maybe in the future. But I just want everyone to have fun. It's really what's important there. And that's what these actions we take are to move in that direction. And of course, thank you to Jinx for all of her hard work. And there you go. That is the vlog. I had fun with fun watching and listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. It's coming by and see you next time. Incoming left. Be careful left. Be careful. Retreat left. Take right there. Ultimate is ready. Be careful. An enemy has been slain. Retreat right lane. has been slain. Your middle tower is under attack. Enemy missing! Enemy missing middle! Be right back. Nice job. Be right back. 
An enemy has been slain. An enemy has been slain. Enemy missing middle. Enemies have returned to middle. Your middle tower is under attack. Enemy I'll missing middle. middle lane. Be careful left. Be careful right. An enemy has been slain. An enemy has been slain. An enemy has been slain. Nice job. You rock. No rock. Okay. An enemy has been slain. Be right back. Retreat! Retreat left lane! Sorry. <laughs> 